so welcome, Thanks. Donald Mowat. Incredible international career spanning Hollywood and beyond, um, and uh, we're just sort of thrilled to have you here. How did you How did you get into your first big production, and what was it? Uh, a movie or just yeah? Okay, so before that happens, there's a lot you got to you got to pound a lot of pavement <laughs> to get to that. So let's skip all that. So to get a movie. You're putting your name out everywhere. You're calling people. We didn't do that back then. Um, back in the olden days, and I grew up in the 1960s, which really is the olden days for you because we didn't have internet. When you were looking for work, you didn't call people. It was a very no bueno. That was rude. You didn't pick up the phone, the broken phone. Uh, I just want to just talk about this for a second because with the Instagram, I, I get a lot of people's email sending me their resumes and stuff. I think you have to understand and think of it the same way as calling, hi, oh, my name is so-and-so. It's, it's the same kind of, not quite the same as calling somebody at dinner time. But I'm from a generation of somebody called your house at 6 o'clock, people say it's dinner time. You never call people. Remember that? You never call. Now we don't think like that because people have dinner at 10 o'clock at night or 4 in the morning. But we're, I'm of a generation where you never call people at certain times of the day. You never called after, was it 9 o'clock at night? 9 o'clock. Right, it was like 9 o'clock. You never called on a Sunday morning. So calling for work, for instance, I wanted, when I first came to Toronto, I really wanted to work for a woman called Shauna Jabour because I thought she was the best for movie makeup. To me, she was the best one. And she was um, a man, uh, somebody I knew who was an art director said, oh, you should send your resume to Shauna Jabour. And I said, oh, do you have her phone number? And he said, yeah, you can't call her. <laughs> like, it was unheard of, you can't call her up. You know, I just send her a letter, a real letter, like on a typewriter. I think you did. And then I sent her my resume. And I think she did call me and she said, oh, why don't you come? We're doing um, like a meeting. Back then, it was ACFC. Um, they were over here by Parliament Street. I'm meeting some makeup people because I'm testing people for Anna Green Gables. Remember Anna Green Gables? The real, not the recent one. <laughs> I've gotten the real one in 1985. And I want to test people to do makeup on the background. And so she brought me in. So that's how I got my first job in Montreal. A little bit before that, I, I was able to work on a thing called um, it's my very first job. And you're gonna laugh. It was called Meatballs. Oh. <laughs> and the woman called me because my name was on the union book with a little star, which meant he knows nothing. <laughs> But that's what we used to do. I wish they would have a list like that. They know nothing, basically, is what that means. And so it had a little star next to my name. And this woman called me. I'm forever thankful to her. And she called me out and she said, hey, I need some extra people to do touches on Meatballs 3, I guess it was Patrick Dempsey, was the actor. And I thought, okay, I had no clue. And I had to go, and of course, I had to drive. I was, I don't know how old I was, very young. 19 maybe? Yeah. And the call was so early in the morning, I actually stayed at a friend's house because I was so nervous that I would miss the times that she said she would drive me if I were at her house at four in the morning. Oh, and so I stayed at my, you know what that's like, right, with those calls. I stayed at my friend's house who lived right near her so I could get a taxi to go to her, I mean, it's all great when I came back and talk about trigger, I was like, oh my God. And I stayed at my friend's house who lived in an apartment not far from Louise Mignot's and then we went to work together and she gave me a lot of days on that job. So that was my first job. And that led to another job where, you know, like everything, people go, yeah, he was okay, he didn't know her. 
he keeps walking into the shop or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then I sat in somebody's chair I shouldn't have been sitting in, which by the way, people still do. So you learn a lot of lessons. But she was very helpful. And I was sad to hear the woman who was her key actually just died the day before yesterday. So a lot of people I started with are no longer with us. So it's a long time ago. Yeah, but that's really my first job. And it got me my first job here, which got me plenty of other jobs. And usually if you do well in your first couple of jobs, you'll keep working. Did you try to talk to as much people as possible while you were on like, your first couple of jobs? Well, you have to be careful with that because I'm finding that some people kind of, it's got to be organic. It can't be, I don't like, uh, I've been noticing a difference since we talked about this a little bit with Pam, right? There's yeah. a difference. There's a little difference now where people kind of interview you and sometimes it kind of throws me a little bit where it's not natural. It's not, hey, what about when I'm working and I'm busy, I can't be having an additional person start. I can't. Yeah. It's not the time or the place. So people have to be very careful and respect other people's time. Um, but, uh, but, uh, you know, but at the same time, it's also nice to be generous to people and kind and give them. I do give a lot of my time to people. I feel bad when I don't respond to emails from people with the resumes because I used to be like that. I always respond. But there is sometimes a manipulation that goes with that because I've also responded and then I go, I responded. Like, I did it. And then the person's, yeah, but I wanted to. And you're like, okay, you know. So I think you have to, what's the word for it? Read the room. And I've been on jobs where people weren't reading the room, and you kind of go, yeah, you know what, you're not really reading the room. And I think that's where you have to kind of uh, check yourself and see if you're maybe not reading the room, because that's very indicative of how you are in within, let's say, the makeup tent, or the, uh, the bus, or the trailer, or however you're working. So you got to really check yourself if you're that person who's maybe over. I had somebody recently who was really trying hard, I get it, but I did have to say to them, listen, you're doing great, you're doing great, you're okay. You don't have to like carry my bag. You know, I mean, like, I, I understand all that, but some people overcompensate and you have to be very careful that you don't overdo it because then you're like a needy person. Speaking of that, um, when you're just starting off, is there any advice that you would give in general besides like you know reading the room and things like that that you wish people knew coming into the industry now that maybe you would tell them? Well, I mean, I think it's really hard. You can ask people, you know, is it okay if I send you, excuse me, my resume? You can ask people, but I do think that <coughs> we're in a different time. I know the business has changed a lot, and in some ways it's harder, in some ways it's easier. I can never make up my mind, you know. Some days I kind of go, God, they work so hard. And other days I'm like, ah, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't crew. Like, I just finished a four-month film, I, you know, the new Tron. And, I mean, I could crew at the beginning because I was getting so many resumes and phone calls. And by the end, I couldn't crew it. I couldn't staff it by the end. Because everybody's going to a TV show or they're getting callbacks or they're getting bigger jobs or longer. And, People have changed. I mean, I was really, um, I'll give you for instance. So somebody might say to me, hey, I really would, you know, love to come back, but I just got offered six months on a TV show. Uh, you know, I get it, you know, but I don't really need to know your business. That is too much information. But people are now, see, we never did that back in the day. You know, you, I'm trying to say this a nice way. I had a lot of people that kind of made their problems. You're a freelance. You're a freelance. You chose a life that's a very hard life, right? I mean, it's hard. It, it's you're putting yourself out there. Nobody cares. I mean, I hate to say it, but nobody does. You think they do, and they don't. <laughs> but I get it. Nobody cares. Once I say no to someone, they put the phone down. They're calling somebody else. 
Um, it's nice to be told, oh, we're going to miss you. Yeah, they do for five minutes. But I also feel that you have to learn to have a very thick skin and learn to also stand up and say, look, you know, he doesn't call me all the time. I'm a replacement. I have had people who I know they've done a lot of really good work for me. I will call them again if I'm in that position. Uh, and I usually will give them an indication. I will call them again if I'm in that city or, you know what I mean, or I'm going to recommend them. But I also have people who kind of use you and say, take that, take that, take that. It's a new generation of people who go, I don't care. You know, and then they, if you treat people like that, you cannot be upset that that person then says, my next film, I use whomever I want. I have no loyalty. Because you'll meet producers and actors who go, I have no loyalty. I do not care. I work with whomever presents themselves. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's not a, a job for sissies because there are people who treat you that way. And you go, oh, okay. And I've had people who treat me as the HOD that way, where I can tell. I'm like, oh, do you want to work for the next three weeks? And they go, no, actually, I'm waiting for, I'm like, OK. They told me that they want to. That's cool. It's absolutely fine because we're in a, a business that's not about that for some people. And it's a newer generational thing, too, because people have their eyes set on what they're building. And at entry level, you sometimes might just want to pay your rent. Could be, you know, your biggest priority. I never felt like that when I started. So if it's any, if it helps you, I would say, I would get offered, say, two days. I knew I could get two days working with, say, Sean. Or I could get five days working with Joe Blow or Jane Doe. I always chose Sean because she did better work. She was on better projects. And she was an infinitely better person to work for than working with Joe Blow, who didn't have the reputation. She did. My career was infinitely better because as I moved up, People went, if he's good enough for her, he's good enough for us. And that's how it was perceived. I don't know if it's changed that much, to tell you the truth, in the business. Maybe it has. I don't think it has, though. What would you say are like, the top few things that like, really stick out to you when working with people who are younger in the industry that would make you say, I would take this person on again and anyone would work for? That's a great question. That I would take them again? Well. They're not on their phones. They're a keeper, for one. Because being on the phone has become a thing that I sort of take now with express, showing their interest and their passion. Or if somebody's really listening to me, I mean, yeah, after a while you go, oh, God, they just don't stop. But it says a lot about somebody because I noticed this thing, we talked about that before here, didn't we, about like uh, community and this woman called me recently um, in Vancouver who was working there, who's from here, Kat. No, Kat, Kat Chris. Kat, yeah, who's, she's not here. Right? Yeah. And she called me asking, you know, she's newer ish. Well, to me, she is. She's younger than me. She said, you know, what? how, how do you think I could help that create community? Because People have heard me on podcasts and talk about a lack of community, which I think there is. Because what I noticed, um, I can't speak to this group, because some of you I've never met before. When we started, or I started, we were always doing something, either making a movie, or if we weren't working for money, we were practicing, or we were having like a cheap and cheerful night at home where, you know, somebody made dinner and then somebody would. Oh God, it used to be like Jane Stevenson would teach us. She always knew how to do the latest and greatest. And four or five of us would get together. And somebody always, you know, bought the cheap wine. And um, somebody, had, you know, made the spaghetti. And somebody else knew how to make this. And we, we had a community. And it was fun. And everybody was into the business. I don't see that as much anymore, where people um, were collaborative and filmmakers. <laughs> It felt more like the makeup artists now, where all they were into was makeup and not being so much filmmakers, which I think is a big mistake. Yeah. Um, 
that you have to, because I have to see myself as a filmmaker first, then as a makeup artist, because it's all the same thing. You're telling stories. So that's how you get taken more seriously. So we were friends of people who were photographers, or people who were writing or directing, so we were involved. And uh, when you finish school, you shouldn't just go home. You should be still part of it. You should be making movies all the time, or doing makeup, or being part of it. And I wasn't seeing that. And I think what she was asking me was how to form a community is that. Out of like all the actors and celebrities you've worked with, who is your favorite? Who is your least favorite? You'll never work again. <laughs>
for me, and I say this to a lot of people, if I went to the dentist and I had to get a crown, you know, you ever get a crown put or fix a tooth? Mm -hmm. And I stopped the guy, the dentist or the woman, who's been to school for years to learn how to do this. And actually, makeup and dentistry are quite related, you know. There's a lot of similarities. And I stopped them and actually like, took their hand and said, wait, 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 one second. Are you sure that's the way to do it? <laughs> but it's a fair analogy, isn't it? Then how does it feel for you, even when you're at this level, you're all starting? Can you imagine how it feels? Because I heard a story recently that just made my blood boil. It was a hair of somebody uh, that was not so nice that somebody called me and said, what do you think of this person? And I said, well, I, I would do that job. And this person pulled a brush from somebody's hand and was trying to tell them how to do their hair. And I went, well, the person who was doing the hair, you know, was a two-time Academy Award nominated hairdresser um, that I would hire in a heartbeat, because I usually run hair as well in movies. I would be. You know, everybody knows how they want to look, and you can give an idea, but it was so rude. It was so rude. But imagine doing that to your dentist, or if a nurse were taking your blood, or giving you a COVID thing, or something, pulling away from them. It's friggin' rude. <laughs> so why is that <clears throat> permitted? And I think it's because people don't fight back. And then you have to be very careful, because I would. If somebody did that to me, I would say something. And I think, but don't you think that that's a newer thing? We never saw that before. And I'm hearing a lot of that happening. But I would just say, uh-uh. Like, that's, talk about HR. <laughs> but I do think that's, that's something we never saw before. Mm -hmm. Another question. Hi. Hey, um, what was your most challenging project, and which project is the closest to your heart? Well, they're all challenging, the ones that read on paper. Well, sometimes the ones I think afterwards, uh, like the ones I like the most. My rule of thumb is the ones that are fun, fun are terrible movies. <laughs> and the ones that are channel all that stuff, you know, you almost, yeah. So, um, I've always said, Doom is a masterpiece. But I don't even like to talk about it because it's just a nightmare. Um, but, you know, yeah, I guess that's the one, the first one. Um, is it the scale or the location? It's or everything, it's the location, it's trying to crew it, it's the people, the cast are all great, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's so impossibly hard. Yeah. You're on your own, you feel so alone trying to handle a crew like that. Uh, you feel very alone, and you're uh, 40, someone's up to 40, 50 crew. Um, Make up alone. Make up hair prosthetics, I up to 40, 45. Um, not my favorite, no. Um, Blade Runner, probably 2049. No, I like smaller movies. Probably Nightcrawler. Probably.